Hi, I'm Charles Purcell, and this is the log for Monday, 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 July 6. Do, 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 do. Oh boy. All right, the weekend behind us. Thank God. Oh, shaboosh. I was telling you on Friday how I just really. Fourth of July weekend. Oh, Lord. The uh, jingoists and the xenophobes did not disappoint. They just really came out. Oh, yeah, July 4th is so weird. You know, we live so much by our social feeds, sometimes we forget. And actually, I have to ask you a question. I'm not sure if this is just my social feed because I am who I am. Are you getting a lot of anti-4th of July stuff this weekend? Namely, Frederick Douglass's famous What to the Slave is the 4th of July? I'm sure you must have heard this, right? It was all over my social feed especially the James Earl Jones version, his reading of it. I can't imagine that you don't know this by now, but if you don't, uh, yeah, Frederick Douglass was asked to give a speech on the 4th of July. And uh, he wrote this very powerful address and gave it about, well, what does the 4th of July mean to me? This is your holiday, not the slave. You know, my people were slaves. It's played every year, Democracy Now! played a version of it. This year, well, I'm not sure when they first did it. I I first saw it this year. Several of Frederick Douglass's descendants read the address. So there's that. And then um, other articles about the 4th of July and U.S. independence from the Native American viewpoint. And then especially with the, the orange menace at Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills. Then this year especially a lot about that. Again, from a very educational perspective, historic perspective. And so my question is, do you get this in your feed also? Is it only uh, hippy-dippy lefties who get this in their feed? Or is everybody seeing it? I I honestly don't know. I'm asking you. I hope a lot of people are being educated about this way of thinking. Well, the 4th of July weekend, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first... The meme of the day. Da, 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 da. Today's meme of the day. This will be the dumb meme of the day, the stupid meme of the day. And here it is. Assuming one is against police when they're against police brutality is like assuming one is anti parent when they're against child abuse. No, this is the uh, a few bad apples argument. No, that's I don't I certainly don't agree with this. No, no, I am against the police as an entity, as a concept, as an idea. The police is a bad bad idea it was from the very beginning. Yes, we need to get together and find ways to protect ourselves and protect each other. Of course, that's a good idea. But anything resembling the police is just a bad, bad idea. I'm not just against police brutality. I am against the police. This little analogy you're making, this comparison to being anti-parent, no, that's not at all the same. I think being a parent is uh, wonderful and natural and good. And comparing policing to parenting in this direct analogy is just really screwy. And the person who posted it comments, it's weird that this has to be explained. And of the many people who liked and commented, please make this shareable, Purple Heart. Yes, agreed. Lots of lots of hearts and thumbs up and that new weird caring emoji they've got. <laughs> what a bad idea that was as well. Yeah, assuming one is against police when they're against police brutality is like assuming one is anti-parent when they're against child abuse. No, dumb, stupid, uh, bad. That's the stupid meme of the day. Stupid meme of the day. 
Yeah, see, that's the deal with most uh, people who self-identify as liberals. Yeah, there's, there's a there's this huge gap right now between liberals and progressives, or I don't know. The names aren't aren't helpful. It's, it's they get in the way. But the real lefties, people who get it and people who don't, this 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 mealy mouthed, wishy washy, middle of the road, mainstream liberal, just doing way more harm than good. Which reminds me, you know, we haven't talked about Joe Biden in a while. The election is coming up here. What is it? Less than, uh, let's do the math here. Let's see, July, August, September, October, less than four months away. We're inside four months. And, of course, all the polls are crazy in Joe Biden's favor. He's up by double digits. He's ahead in every single swing state. And even pulling up in some states that were never expected to be swing states. Texas, Georgia, there's some places he was never expected to win that he's really either like leading or very, very close. And and then in all the uh, swing states that we know about, of course, places like Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, just ahead by wide margins in many of these states. So there's that. There's the Orange Menace's plummeting poll numbers not doing well with uh, the virus response, not doing well in response to Black Lives Matter, just scoring low on all of those. So this, this, all, this is stuff you all know. Here's, here's what I'd like to contribute to the current discourse. And it's, it's simply this. Democrats, liberals, progressives, I don't care what you call yourselves, uh, never Trumpers, the, there's plenty of Republicans. There's the whole Lincoln Project thing going on. This organized group of Republicans who are actively campaigning against the Orange Menace, coming up with really scathing television ads. Anybody who wants the Orange Menace gone. My only advice to you, if, if you're asking for it, um, do what you do. Do what you do. This has become a coalition now of all the people I just described. And of those people... Establishment liberals, Democrats, real institutionalists, never Trump Republicans, the people who are feeling most disenfranchised, most ignored, are the far lefties. My advice is to the far lefties. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I know you don't want to vote for Joe. I am not here to tell you who to vote for. But if you believe that voting for Joe is the best and probably the only way to remove the orange menace, then by all means vote for Joe. Again, I am not telling you who to vote for. If you can't bring yourself to do it, I completely understand. But right now I'm talking to those people who are kind of either leaning that way or have made that decision. Because it's most important right now that we get the orange menace on that helicopter. So if that describes you, then here's my advice. Uh, Just buck up and stop feeling bad. We can't, any of us, go through life just filled with regret all the time and feel like we're just always being cheated and life is unfair because we are always being cheated and life is unfair. And I'm, I'm a big advocate for righteous anger, but I'm not an advocate for depression. I'm not an advocate for this sort of hopeless malaise that seems to be washing over a lot of folks. If you're in that camp, if you've decided that, yeah, I'm voting for Joe, my advice to you is, A, do it with a song in your heart and a smile on your face. That's And that's for you. That's just for you. I want you to be well. I want you to be happy. And in addition to that, I think it'll help your cause. Because if you've decided that you want to do that, maybe you want to bring some of your friends with you and convince them it's the right thing to do. I think what's missing in this campaign so far is a real enthusiastic message from the far left. And so you guys have a responsibility now because more and more people are understanding your deal. The far left, through circumstances beyond our control 
namely the virus and Black Lives Matter, the far left has been given a bit of a voice that it didn't have up until very recently. You're getting some attention. You're certainly getting quite a lot of attention from the Orange Menace. He's pulling you out as the straw man, boogeyman, the big scare tactic, trying to label Joe Biden, of all people, as anti-police, which is ridiculous. Have you seen the, the new ad where uh, it's the 911 recording of this dystopian future where Joe Biden is president? And they say, oh, if it's a murder, press one. If it's a rape, press two. Anything else, press five or something like that. And we'll get back to you because the police have been now defunded. So now if you make an emergency call to 911, approximate wait time, five days. <laughs> so they paint this ridiculous extreme scenario, willfully misunderstanding, misrepresenting what defund the police actually means, and then uh, trying to paint Joe Biden with that. So there are a hundred different ways this is crazy and wrong. Of course, just on the face of it, it's wrong. What defund police folks envision is something much more efficient when you call that 911 number. You're going to get what you need, where you need, and not necessarily a cop with a gun to make things worse. I don't have to explain this to you. The point is, uh, you're getting their attention. You are starting to infiltrate the mainstream. Lefties, real lefties, real progressives. So take advantage of it. Get excited. And if you've decided that you're voting for Joe, you got to be okay with that. Also, you have to be honest about it. Now, I've been saying this for a long time, and recently I've been hearing it from some other voices too, the, uh, the Progressive Caucus in Congress. They're not as left as you are, but that's not a bad direction they're going in. And I've heard voices from over there saying, uh, no, I'm not going to pretend that Joe is my candidate, but I'm going to vote for him and I'm encouraging you to vote for him for the obvious reasons. That's, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear some honesty. And I'm asking you to, to embrace that honesty and, and take it to the extreme. You can go and tell us how much you hate Joe, not just that he's the lesser of two evils, not just that, oh, well, he wasn't my first choice. Go ahead, with enthusiasm, tell us how terrible he is. And then tell us why you're voting for him. And make no apologies about it. Don't try to soft soap Joe's shortcomings. That is the absolute worst thing you can do. Lefties, real lefties, real progressives. I think you should be sweeping across the country over the next three and a half months, giving speeches large and small, getting in front of every camera you can find, every microphone you can find, and send your message loud and clear. We hate Joe. We hate Joe. Please vote for him. <laughs> we hate him. We don't like him. Be 100% honest why Joe is the worst possible candidate except for the other one. See, I, th I think that is a strategy that will work. I think you'll get more people voting for Joe, and that's what you want. If you're honest about how much you hate him, just say flat out, we want to get the orange menace on a helicopter. We will be the loyal opposition starting in day one to force Joe to meet the left's agenda or they'll be held to pay. This is pretty much, this is pretty much the Tea Party success story. Back in 2010, they elected a whole bunch of Tea Partiers into Congress they were openly belligerent in the face of their party leadership. They sent John Boehner packing. This is, the, this is the model you guys have to adopt and embrace. Fight hard with no apologies for all the down-ballot positions. State your cases without reservation. State the lefty case. This is your moment. It's your moment. Take it. And don't pretend to like Joe in any possible way. Don't soft pedal his weaknesses. Be 100% honest. And I think that's your best strategy and your best path to success. 
So there's our current uh, political situation and my advice to you lefties out there. Hmm, what else about the weekend here, 4th of July? It was so strange to see so many people sharing their family get-togethers. Friends and family members all putting their head-to-head, cheek-to-cheek poses for the selfies. You know that's not safe, don't you? You guys, come on. Unless you're hugging the person you live with every day. There are family units, the, the people you live with. Do we still have to explain this after all this time? Going outside of that immediate family unit to contact other people is a risk. Now, there's level of risks. I like that chart that's been out. There have been a, a couple different uh, uh, charts from reputable sources, big medical institutes, charting 1 through 10 with bars being at the very top of the list. That's a 10 risk. And something like takeout from a restaurant is a 1 risk. Well, getting together with families is kind of in the middle of the pack there. You can't just get together and give everybody a hug, which you're showing in these uh, little selfies you're posting. Yeah, the um, attitudes about the virus are still all over the map, and there's such a weird disconnect. I've become more of a local news enthusiast than I was before the virus. Local news as we know over the years, it's pretty much just murders and fires and no actual news that we can use. But since the virus, I've taken to watching local news because there's quite a lot to be learned. But I've noticed they'll, they'll do a story about how dangerous things are. And then without even taking a breath in the very next story, They'll be hawking some local business. Oh, come and get your tattoos here, or get your cheeseburger here, or get your haircut here. And they'll do a five-minute little PR piece for a local business. Yeah, it's very, it's very inconsistent, to the point of being comical. Like, what are you doing? And that's what I just, I just keep seeing everywhere. I'm seeing it in local media, national media, and social media. This, the, oh my God, the sports thing. Major League Baseball, several players have opted out. They've got, they have the option to not play. Several big names have opted to not play this year. NBA and Major League Baseball both scheduled to start at the end of this month. I'll believe it when I see it. I will believe it when I see it. I, I have a very hard time even believing it's going to happen. Well, let's see here. With the time remaining i got to share this with you. Oh, man. Fourth of July weekend. I don't mean to always be picking on this same conservative friend. <laughs> I haven't named him yet. Maybe you figured out who he is. But I've got to bring him up one more time because he posted something really weird. It has to do with fireworks. And I'm talking to you from River West in Milwaukee. River West, the greatest neighborhood in the world. And we've had a little bit of a controversy around here because there's lots of fireworks going off, personal fireworks. And apparently that's happening all over the city. On local news on the 4th of July, they showed an aerial view of the city, looking over much of the city, and there were just fireworks going off everywhere, everywhere, just popping and popping. Of course, personal fireworks are illegal in Milwaukee, illegal to buy and illegal to fire up. But they were everywhere. And your neighborhood, like mine, I bet, has been having this little internal fight. First of all, they're the people who set them off. This is my freedom, and uh, it's my tradition, and I like it, and it's fun, and it's the 4th of July, and get off my case. Others who are just terribly annoyed, kind of the Karens of the world, it's annoying me, so stop it. <laughs> it's inconveniencing me. I can't hear my Disney Plus show. Uh, there's that. But then there are other people who get a little bit more sympathy. This is not a cut and dried uh, debate here. There's plenty of nuance to go around. There are people who have genuine PTSD issues they're dealing with, and all these loud bangs are very difficult for them. Uh, there are the pet lovers. We know dogs, many dogs, most dogs just really cannot deal with fireworks and they get highly stressed. 
So there are all these uh, conflicting feelings about fireworks. I myself, I have to confess, I kind of sat this one out. I had a little bit of sympathy for the introverts and the PTSD folks. I had sympathy for the dogs. But then part of me also said, you know, kind of get over it. Get your dog a little, uh, one of those vests and just hug him up and love him. Maybe drug him a little bit. I don't know. I, I didn't have strong feelings about this. I will tell you straight out, the idea of setting off personal fireworks, to me, just personally, has always been a really dumb trailer trash kind of thing to do and would never consider it for myself as any kind of entertainment. It just seems really, really dumb. But that's just a matter of taste. If other people want to do it, I'm not going to tell you not to. It's a baseball versus hockey versus basketball versus ballet versus the opera. <laughs> you know, it's just different tastes. People do different things. I'm not going to make a big argument about it. Just for me personally, it seems like the d stupidest, dumbest waste of time and money. So there's that. But here, my conservative freedom friend, you know, which is a thing that's come up lately that I like. The freedom, F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B, freedom. He's a freedom guy. Talked about him a lot on the show. I should make up a name for him just so we can all sort of be on the same page when I talk about him. All right, I'm, I'm going to read you another one of his brilliant posts. My freedom friend. Okay, this is just weird. This is just weird. Uh, the free dumb people generally, as a rule, have a hard time writing posts. They write quickly or they don't bother sometimes with uh, grammar. <laughs> and sometimes you have to go back and fill in the missing words to figure out what they meant. So he starts out this way. As ashamed I have been of the behavior of my fellow countrymen over the last several months... So first of all, as ashamed as I have been, I guess is what he meant. Uh, it, that tripped me up for a minute. And then just to use a phrase like my fellow countrymen, <laughs> who says that? Well, this guy does. <laughs> as ashamed as I have been of the behavior of my fellow countrymen over the last several months, last night gave me renewed hope in people's willingness to pursue freedom at the 11 p.m. drive time back from Muskego to Menominee Falls, we drove home without an interruption to the dense, smoke-filled air of what simply had to be the result of millions of individual fireworks being set off and no wind whatsoever. So while the media is daily telling us what is dividing us, I now know what will bring us all together. Fireworks! The universal symbol of celebration. No wonder they forced the cancellation of firework displays across the country. And yet, for this one thing, people were willing to say, screw the government's rules. I'm blowing something up today. Proud of you all! Double exclamation points. You exercised your free choice, used your numbers to make a rule unenforceable. That's enforceable with an I, enforceable. <laughs> and none of the dangers you were warned about actually happened. Hmm. That's the H-M-M-M-M-M-M. Dot, dot, dot. If we could only use this as a lesson and apply it to all the BS rules our republic has pushed upon free men and women for far too long now. American flag emoji. <laughs> Jesus. This is the same guy who defied the stay-at-home orders, this is the same guy who's written screeds about not wearing a mask. Well, this is his latest. And then the response, amen, triple exclamation point, thumbs up, American flag emoji, American flag. 
I'm glad I was able to stimulate the fireworks economy and put on a small but very loud and colorful show for many to see. Like you said, I left Waukesha last night around 900 p.m., heading to a friend's house in Milwaukee. All the way there, fireworks everywhere. Then down in Milwaukee, it was like a war zone. Non-stop fireworks. And I didn't see one police officer around. Amen. Right on. Five exclamation points. Hashtag boom. East of Tosa has sounded like a war zone all week. America. One, two, three, four, five American flag emojis. Let freedom ring as we celebrate our poor and downtrodden ancestors who came to this country to escape tyranny and servitude. They worked hard and sacrificed to build a better life for us. Many died working in jobs that they were treated inhumanly, treated with total disregard to their well-being. Thank you to all who sacrificed to build the great country we have today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I kept this friend in my social sphere because occasionally I need to see this. I need to understand where they're coming from, that they still exist in apparently pretty large numbers. I don't know exactly what to do about them, but it's good to know. It's, it's good to be aware of them. And I'll bet they just loved the Orange Menace's Mount Rushmore rant where he called me evil, called me a, a left-wing fascist, whatever that is, just called me all sorts of names. Yeah, there, there is a huge divide and this stupid, superficial, flag-waving, freedom contingency is out there they got numbers. I don't know how we ever convince them of anything. I think the way you kind of convert these folks is first just to beat them, just to win on sheer numbers, outnumber them at the polls, okay? And then if and when sensible laws and policies can be instituted, then even these folks will understand the benefits pretty quickly. Oh, my corporate boss isn't the boss of me all the time. There's some democracy in the workplace. Uh, oh, health care is a human right, and I get the benefit from that as well. All the social problems from health care to child care, education, workers' rights, problems of, of violence. Oh, gee, you know what? There's not nearly the violence since there's not so much income inequality. Once they see the benefit of all these very reasonable solutions, they might not admit it, they might not say it out loud, but they'll know. They'll just, they'll know it in their own lives. They'll see the difference. The world is just a better place. Oh, and by the way, I've st I still have all my freedom. They didn't take my freedom after all. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, here's hoping for better days. And uh, <laughs> now we got the 4th of July behind us. We don't have to deal with that for another year. <laughs> what a weird holiday that is. All right. I love you guys. And there's the log for today. I'm Charles Purcell. Talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.